Hey guys, welcome back to another video at the sawmill. And today I'm going to be changing my blade guides. So I'm going to change out the ceramic guides for roller guides. I'm going to take you through how to do that and then uh, we'll see how it works. I have the old version of the HD36 Norwood portable sawmill and I've been having some trouble with the ceramic blade guides. So I decided to try the roller guides, so we're going to swap them out and see what happens. Alright, so in order to take these old ones off, I need a 9 16 inch socket and a 3 16 inch Allen key to loosen this up. I'm going to take the lube off and that will come off later once this is removed. But first of all, we're going to loosen this back bolt here. Loosen up the head, then we can loosen this Allen screw and pull this bolt out. And there it is. There wasn't much to taking that off. Pull that out. I just got to take the other one out. All right, so I've got the old guides out. Now it's time to open up the box and see what's inside. Let's open up the box. By the way guys, um, I had a pretty good experience with Norwood ordering these parts. Um, all I did was I emailed them and told them what I was after. I didn't know the parts I needed, so I just told them what I'm going to get, what I'm going to do. and. The guy that was helping me, he was able to get to get on it really fast. He knew exactly what I needed. He sent me the parts, or gave me a quote for the parts, and got it sent out to me. So here it is. There's not much to it. Looks like just new shafts and bearings. That's basically all it is. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So anyways. If you're having trouble getting parts from Norwood, um, try emailing them. Have them order the parts through email. I know a lot of people have had problems with ordering parts from Norwood, but uh, so far I've had pretty good success, and this was actually a pretty quick turnaround as far as time and everything. And also, I have my mill registered on their website, um, on the replacement parts website with Norwood Sawmills. So I can go in there, log into my account and order parts or whatever I want um, whatever is available off their store there so let's get this installed I've got sawing to do okay so here's the new parts got the bearings I've got a lock nut and a washer and new set screws as well so that's cool and here is the shaft that these go on so it seems fairly self-explanatory. All I'm going to have to do is insert the new set screw here. Slide the new shaft in there like so. I'm guessing that the bearing go on like this. And then from there I will put the washer on and then the lock nut. Now I have a blade on here that's tightened, so it looks like that's going to want to push down on my blade a little bit. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's normal for 
Norwood sawmills to have the bearing pushing down on the blade. I know another saw manufacturer that that does that and it seems like that's a good thing so we're gonna get these installed and see what it does. It looks like this new set screw is the same size, a 3 16 so that's awesome. So it seems like the way that these are going to work is that it's going to put pressure downward on the blade and actually lower my blade a little bit, which I'm actually excited about because of the fact that when I drop my blade all the way down, I'm cutting a one inch board on the very bottom of the bunk. I have a problem with my saw cover resting on this bottom piece right here and it pushes on that and it doesn't want to it doesn't want to cut quite as low and nice as I wish it would. So I don't like cutting one inch boards all the way at the bottom of the cross bunk because of how the blade covers messes with my cut and I don't really get a consistent cut on the bottom when I'm sawing a one inch board all the way down. So I'm hoping that with these new blade guides having pressure on the blade downward my, my blade is going to be lowered just a little bit and I'm going to have to reset my scale with the new blade height. But I think that's going to give me a more consistent cut on the very last cut. If I'm cutting like a one inch board all the way on my last cut on a can. So I'm excited about that. Here's how I'm tightening this, this nylon lock nut here on the front of this thing. I've got an adjustable wrench and I've got channel locks or vice grips on the back of it there and just using that combination tighten this nut here okay here i've got them all installed except for the set screw just got to tighten those up and if you guys remember a few videos back i was ranting i was talking about how i had my blade was diving and i was having trouble with my blade being tilted forward and it was just diving in the cut pretty consistently and I was having trouble getting my blade level well I think I have just solved that problem with these new roller guides the blade is about perfectly level so I'm gonna tighten up those set screws with the back lip of this thing against the back of the blade I've got the blade pretty much where I want it on the band wheels. Um, something that I've learned recently is that if I run the blade farther in on the band wheels to where the wheel is sitting closer to the gullet of the teeth, about flush and the outside of the band wheel, um, it'll actually should produce a better cut because the blade is stabilized at the front of the cut and the back of the blade can kind of wave like a flag like this that's the idea um, I'm not sure exactly how that exactly works out in real life but that's the theory so I'm excited to give this a try so let's tighten up those set screws and see how it cuts well I'm pretty happy with how easy this whole process was Seemed like it didn't really take all that much to switch out these guides, so I'm happy about that. And for anyone that has the HD36 with the old ceramic guides and you're wondering how to change them, well, here you go. It's not hard at all, it doesn't take much time, and it's also not super expensive. it works now to see how good it actually cuts now one thing that I'm not sure about is how am I going to lube the blade now there's not really anything on this guide here to allow me to lube the blade so I guess I'll have to rig something up unless yeah I don't know I guess I'll just be cutting dry for now. All right, here goes. 
Definitely a little bit louder. All right. Now to see how the cut actually turned out. Wow. This blade here is not is not new, newly sharpened either. So. Got just a little bit of a hump there at the knot, just a little bit. But so far, I'm impressed. It looks really good. Here at this knot, we've got just a little bit of a hump, but that's not bad. So now I've made a few cuts on my first log with the new roller guides and I gotta say I'm fairly impressed but I haven't run it through a lot of wood yet so it remains to be seen what it's going to do in the long term. Um, so far I only have experience with the ceramic blade guides so it's going to be new for me to kind of figure it out as I go I guess. One problem that I'm seeing already is that I'm having sawdust building up on this wheel and so I think I'm definitely going to need to rig up something to get my lubrication back on there and another th another problem that I'm having is that this one here for some reason this one is hardly touching the blade this one is pushing down the blade pretty good and the problem that I'm having with that is that it is not cutting level so if I throw a level on the blade here, there you can see the blade is not quite level. I mean, it is, it's within 16th inch or so. Um, so it's not, not the worst, but it does seem like it is cutting, huh? Well, there it shows the cut is level right there. Check the cross bunk. Oh, my cross bunk isn't quite level, so. I'm going to have to do some fine tuning, I'm going to have to re-level the cross bunks, I think they were off a little bit actually, and I'm going to see if I can adjust these a little bit, maybe get some more down pressure on this one right here, in order to get it level between the bearings. So that is the only issue that I'm having so far, actually two issues, is that I don't know how I'm supposed to run the blade lube with the roller bearing guides. And I'm also having the problem with my blade not being quite level this way. But other than that, guys, I am pretty happy with this blade guides so far. So there you go. There's a quick little video on how to change those blade guides. So I hope someone finds this helpful. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, happy sawing.